Coffee with the Chair was recorded before a live studio audience. Welcome. Thank you for that. Welcome to Coffee with the Chair. I'm Teresa Aronson from the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. It's our honor to facilitate this uh, talk show every single month. We do it on, I believe, the second Friday. Thank you for that, Commissioner and Producer. Second Friday, it's 8.30, it's free, it's open to the public, and we have free Danish and coffee from Steamworks. And we all three got the coffee this morning, and it is delicious. We'll have to have him tell us a little bit about the coffee sometime. But please welcome, as always, our Board of County Commission Chair, Commissioner Sean Mitchell. And it's always a pleasure, thank it's you. It's always a pleasure to have you. And, how, and you brought a guest today, which I'm really excited about. Well, one of the departments in our county, which is important, uh, more important than most people realize, is the libraries for our, for our county. And uh, Susan's been on the, so I'm not going to misquote myself, how many years uh, running the libraries for our county? I've been running the libraries 10 years. Okay. Oh, 10 and years. I've been here 20 years yeah, in the so county. So she has a, she's like a walking library. Very me, good. Know, she's a, a, sweet, a sweet, dear lady who uh, works hard. And really a lost art. The library is a lost art, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like we're not utilizing the great things it has to offer as much as we should. Absolutely, and it's, a, it's like a hidden treasure. Yeah. Well, welcome to the show, Susan. Thank you so much for having me this morning. So Thank let's um, talk in general about the libraries here in this community. How many do we have? So right now we have six branches, mm -hmm. plus we have a, an agreement with uh, Indian River State College. We have a, a joint use library. So there are seven facilities available to the public, uh, full service libraries available to residents in St. Lucie County. And they vary in size from the teeny 4,200 square foot Port St. Lucie Library to our new, newest one on Rosser Boulevard, um, the uh, Paula Paul Lewis, Lewis Library. Mm -hmm. So um, tell everybody where they are located, because I think that we all know there's libraries in communities. It's one of the amenities that we expect government to provide us. We don't know how, or but and a lot of times we don't know where, but we expect it from our government. So where are we? We just talked about Rosser, the Paul Lewis so Library. We can go north to south. We okay. have a library in Lakewood Park. We have uh, the Hurston Library on Avenue D. We have the big library downtown right on the water, the on Susan Lane. Kilmer Library. Mm -hmm. We have the small library on Prima Vista. We have a library in Morningside, Morningside Boulevard. And then we have the Paula Lewis Library is the furthest southwest. And then people know where the Pruitt campus is. That's where our joint use library is. Very good. So when I went to, the, um, when I went to school, you had to, in elementary, learn how to use the Dewey Decimal System, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Do they even teach that to kids anymore? Well, I don't, I don't know what we, they teach them in school, but we do use the Dewey Decimal System. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but the library really has, our library has been all about removing barriers to people in use for these last, certainly for the last five years or so. So for the young kids, we have a lot of pictographs to direct people towards what they want and great pictures of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs have remained one of the most uh, sought after books in the library. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, so we, yes, definitely still use Dewey, but you know, the library is about so much more than books, and, yeah. I, and I hope we get a chance to talk about some of those things this yeah, morning. Yeah, we definitely will. I want to talk about all the resources that the library has, because people don't realize it. And then of course, Eric Gill, your, mm -hmm. your PIO here at the county, does a show, a music show, right. which I love. But I haven't gotten my library card yet, so I can't go on it because that's a prerequisite for being mm -hmm. on that show is you must have your library card. And it has to be about music available at the library. And people are like, there's music at the library? I don't understand. So tell us a little bit about that one. Well, you, at li what we like to say is the library is about so much more than books. Uh, we're about the community's power to buy resources for everybody. And a lot of those resources are electronic. So we have obviously eBooks, but what you mentioned is our streaming music service. Uh, with your card, you can stream and own uh, 10, I think it's up to 10 songs a week. It's called Freegal, that service. Five songs. Five songs. We have a songs. couple of music See? buffs. Sorry. Eric and I'm Mike sorry. Klaus are, you know, they're into that. So you can't, can't question them on their music trivia. Who needs Apple Music, right? Yeah. 
So five so, a week you can. And it's that it's the entire Sony catalog. And mm -hmm. when you think about, you know, we're all about making the money go in the uh, furthest, right? So rather than buy a huge collection of DVDs for every, um, excuse me, CDs for every library, we have the streaming service. And instead of having access to thirty thousand songs, uh, residents have access to over three hundred thousand pieces of music. Oh wow. Enough for Eric to be doing a show, you know, yep. month and, after month for and many, the, uh, many years. And the head of branches is his co-host on that, Mark Free. They're both music buffs, and yes. yeah, they do a good job. That show gets a lot of a, a lot of viewers. It does. I'm a little jealous, but and, that's okay. And in addition to that, we have our ebook service. You mm -hmm. know, we uh, the libraries come through COVID, right? We're like everybody else. We're still recovering. Uh, our book circulation is om is like 80 percent of what it was in 2019. But our ebook circulation went through the roof, mm -hmm. and uh, and the county, you know, luckily we were able to deploy a few a little bit more resources to buying ebooks. Very popular service. Uh, you can do everything from the New York Times. A lot of our library resources, you don't even have to leave the house, mm -hmm. right? You can, so you can do investment. We have Morningstar online. We have the music service. We have the New York Times. We have genealogy resources. You can do them in the library, but you can do them from home as well, just by uh, keying into our website. And getting your library card. Yeah, you have need to, your library you card. You've got to register for your library card. Yeah. Can you do that online? Uh, you can begin that online or with a phone call, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, you know, um, yeah. And then other things, uh, you know, I'm really excited because in May we're going to debut a new service. We've been planning it for quite a while. It's called our Memory Studio. Do, do-it-yourself memory studio at, housed at the Kilmer Library. We're fully equipped. We open in May uh, um, for p bring in your, everybody has home movies. Mm -hmm. Well, those, that film is disintegrating. You'll be able to come into the library and digitize your home movies. Oh, wow. You'll be able to digitize your photographs. You'll, um, uh, all your tapes, you know, we're, it's all, so we have this wonderful studio, staff is trained. In May, we'll have a series of open houses so everybody can learn how to, how to digitize. It's called Memory Studio. I am doing that. That's amazing. So, I have clips of my parents back when, well, this is back in the 1940s and 50s that I want to digitalize. That's yeah. amazing. I did not VHS know that. VHS tapes and everything? Everything. Uh, scan, you can scan all your photographs. We're set up so you can scan mm -hmm. your photographs. Uh, and we deliberately headquartered that at Kilmer Library because we work uh, with the Treasure Coast Genealogical mm -hmm. Society. And they have people on, usually people who are genealogists frequently have this shoebox full of mm -hmm. photographs. Mm -hmm. So the genealogists are at Kilmer twice a week and they're there to help you do your family history as and well. Where is the Kilmore Library? 101 Melody Lane. Oh, that's the big the main, library, the big on, library on, on, the on Melody. Okay. Yeah. And it's beautiful. What a location. Oh, yeah, it, it is really beautiful. is. That's, I sit on the library yeah. board and uh, oh. that's where our meetings are. So it's always a pleasure. I didn't know you were on the library board. Yeah, next Thursday we meet right. again. That's right, right on the Friends yeah. of the Library, yeah. yes. Nice. And, and just the partner to that at Paula Lewis, we have our media studio. So people who make their own music, make their own movies, can come in and use our software and, uh, and everything they need to, to uh, make, do the, it's called the multimedia studio. Wow. I mean. I gotta it, add something too. Okay. And before I lose my thought process, but during COVID, libraries shut down, right? Yeah. Well, the, the libraries and the volunteers did not shut, shut down. The librarians, they all went and cleaned offices and did all, so many things be, yeah. above and beyond what they were required to do. So. We can talk about all the good things with the library, but there's people behind the doors, and I just got to tell you, thank on behalf you. of me and all of our citizens in this county, thank you, because they really stepped up. People got paid to stay home, they went to work. And it's oh. just and they it's did, amazing. Uh, yep. Amazing the job. Team is incredible. They did food, worked in the mm -hmm. food bank, they sanitized, they did the public information line, yep. they, they did whatever needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And we were actually closed, Commissioner, 10 weeks. And then we were some of the first services in the county to reopen to the public. Yeah. And that, that was a very interesting period of time, yeah. I bet. And, and, yeah. and even volunteers. <laughs> 
Yeah, I was just going to say the, the library really houses a lot of volunteers. They use uh, we, heavily. We have a real history of volunteers. We've had as many as 90 volunteers working for us at once. Uh, COVID, we're rebuilding our volunteer base because mm. many of our volunteers were retirees. Mm. And mm -hmm. se seniors, you know, are the last population to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to make a generalization. Mm -hmm. It's just an observation. So there's, our volunteers are starting to come back and our business is coming back. Mm -hmm. I actually, my bookkeeper, who was retired, but she, she's my bookkeeper once, she's been a volunteer at the library for many, many years mm -hmm. as well. Uh, we have ta IRS ta tax, AARP tax services out of the library. That's all volunteer based. That's mm -hmm. been going on for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. People can come in and get their taxes done for free. And you said it was through AARP? AARP and then um, we also, it's, uh, I'm blanking, there's two services we run, a community services, Spearhead's another mm -hmm. tax service. I, I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll be able to think of it in a minute, but it's ARP has been with the library for over 20 years doing free taxes. And when you guys open back up, because it is a necessity for many people who are, are need to use your media services, you have those in all the libraries, mm -hmm. right? Uh, well, people came in, you know, when they started coming back to the library, uh, people were scurry in, check out 20 DVDs and scurry out because <laughs> don't forget we have movies right our movie circulation went went way up way up DVD so and then the other thing thanks to the commissioners is we're a fine free library now there are around mm -hmm. 600 library systems in the in the United States and that was really not that we would charge fines in COVID but during that period of time uh, the commissioners uh, w and the friends uh, advocated for it, the Friends mm -hmm. of the Library, uh, actually donated $10,000 a year for two years to subsidize the loss of fines mm -hmm. because we felt uh, residents were hurting mm -hmm. and why not, you know, and with the support of the commissioners, we are now a fine-free library. And let's a add on to that because they have a limited budget, the libraries. Yeah, I was just going to say that. And they that. do, and without the volunteers, we would not be able to do the things that she was just alluding to, and that's so important. Libraries have to be funded. That's one of the most important things, not only the, f the library, but today that's what we're discussing. And to me, that's one of, uh, like you said, it's a hidden treasure. And the more we get the, the message out, because I remember raising my, 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 I have an older son in his 30s, we were at the library all the time. It, we really were. And uh, I think it was from my mom, because my mom taught a, an elderly guy, probably in his 40s, how to read. Mm. But to me, you know, that's the best satisfaction you could ever get. And, to, for you to offer all these type services, not only for the young kids, but for the elderly people and pe people, some people, a lot of times they're alone, yeah. and they can right. they can sink themselves into a book or into music, and that gives them the solace that they need. So, the volunteers are. In, I can't thank you enough with the volunteers because mm -hmm. that's what keeps, you know, our budget where where it is, and we try to raise funds. And she alluded to that with the the, the fees that we uh, yeah. we advocated and, and said they no, were probably you don't have vital to. to the operation. Of course, though, yeah, 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 it's such yeah. a shoestring well, budget. Um, and you were talking about the kids, the populations that come in. Well, our seniors also read, but they like to come in because. The staff is great, so yeah. it's not just about getting a book, it's about talking about mm -hmm. books also. So mm -hmm. a lot of those conversations happen over the desk. Our kids programs uh, across, uh, whether it's underserved or mm -hmm. uh, stay-at-home moms, our kids programs are oversubscribed. Uh, one of the programs at the Little Prima Vista Library, they don't even have a kids room, they did it outside, it's called Music in mm -hmm. Motion, 60 people. 60 kids and moms outside doing music in motion and early literacy activities. And let's talk about a lot of the programs for kids that you have. I know we're going to touch on the summer program, summer reading program, mm -hmm. but you do have a regular list of programs for kids to come in with their parents and get involved at the library. And tell us a little bit about what those are and where they can find the information for it. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I need to just take a step back. Pe everybody thought when ebooks came out that that was the be all and the end all. Well, this many years later, mm -hmm. studies find that kids learn best reading. Turn a page. Turning a page in the exchange. Uh, you know, uh, you know, early literacy happen because when you have a device and a parent, you're talking about how the device works. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about how what's in the book, mm -hmm. the concepts, the colors, the words. Uh, kids the possession. 
Right. You're holding that book. That's your book. Mm -hmm. And the, talking about mm -hmm. it, you know, you point to this, the, mm -hmm. the child points to this. You, um, They're not going to give their tablets up, but they'll share a book. Yeah. <laughs> so we have all six of our branches have uh, every weekly multiple story times every week. The calendar is available on the library's website. Um, you just uh, St. Lucie County Library will pop right up or through the county's uh, through the county's website. Uh, Music in Motion, Baby and Me, uh, Storytime Jam. We go take you right through, uh, you know, uh, kindergarten. And mm -hmm. then we have on weekends, Family Fun Days, story times for all families. And those are, you know, those are the first programs that filled up after COVID, because mm -hmm. I think all those moms we on lockdown with their kids yes. really, really <laughs> need, we never had such good you take Interaction with We never had such good attendance. Yeah, and, yeah I'm sure. And, um, and they're all free. And yeah. it's all free. Every, you know, that's, that's the cornerstone of your public library. They're free, but we actually, we pay for it through our taxes. I mean, yeah. I, I always say that's kind of, I'm always, I'm happy to pay my taxes because I know a piece of it goes to the library. And, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, COVID in 2019, that's our first year, last year, over 750,000 people made visits to one of our libraries in this county. Okay, and they checked out uh, probably around that amount of books. I mean, I don't have my numbers in front of me. Uh, we are building our books are almost there again. Uh, our people coming in the door, we're building every month. We're busier than the last. Mm -hmm. We're expecting a blockbuster summer. Uh, we have uh, a wonderful reading challenge for actually all ages through teens. Okay. We, we've even added an adult summer reading challenge because we mm. have, and, um, and what we have, thanks to the Friends of the Library, wonderful prizes for kids who finish re, uh, the challenge. Mm. And, uh, you know, Friends have been a big supporters uh, of the library. And then we also have, uh, we like to reward reading with reading. So we have milestones and uh, thanks to f uh, a partnership with the Children's Services Council and Learn to Read, every kid who goes halfway through the challenge can pick a quality book to take home for their library. And then they get a chance for a second book to also take home to build their libraries. Because I think we were talking earlier, what's that uh, wonderful quote with about kids who uh, have access to books? So there's a couple of them. Um, I serve on the round table of St. Lucie, mm -hmm. as you know. So there's a couple of them and they've been ingrained into are being the first one is a, a child from kindergarten to third grade a child learns to read and from third grade to um, high school they read to learn mm -hmm. and studies show if they're not reading on grade level by by third, third grade, grade their uh, chances of graduation and success in an education arena greatly diminish mm -hmm. so that's always a buzzword we have to talk about but then we talked about recently um, they had done a study out of Boston on the disparities uh, of books in mm -hmm. households and the underserved community has one book and he told me and I didn't believe him or one book per 300 children mm -hmm. in underserved so it's one book per 300 children and in a middle class to affluent home they have uh, 13 books per one child. So there's a huge discrepancy mm -hmm. in what is being provided. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned Learn to Read through the Children's Services Council, it's one of their programs. Mm -hmm. They work very hard to get these books in these kids' hands. Yes. And just like you, they get to keep them. They get to start their library mm -hmm. at home, and that's important. I think that um, actually owning a book gives oh. you great pride, right? The joy in that, that child, I'm thinking in my head, the joy in that child this is mine. It's, it's is their mine. book, yeah. And there's only one out of 300 of us that have one. Yeah, so that's no, that's crazy. amazing. Oh, I, I know. It's that's like, I didn't believe him. I was like, are you yeah. sure? <laughs> that's a very sobering number, yeah. 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 So hopefully we'll, we'll uh, bring that number down and get Let's a work lot. work on it. You know, yeah. be one of the agencies that gets a lot more books into kids' hands mm -hmm. this summer. And um, the Learn to Read has many libraries where the kids can just take the books and they can keep them and they replenish them or they can put them back. And, and I know that we have sites throughout the community. Is the libraries one of those places? If not, we'll put up another 
Well, uh, those are called, uh, what are those called, little libraries? Mini libraries, you know, are, yeah. We, we don't have them in our libraries because we, the kids have access to... To all the books. To all the yeah. books. <laughs> so it would be counterintuitive, you know, for us. But we support those yeah. for, for sure. Place, you know, and they're in some very interesting places. Doctor's offices <clears throat> and places that kids are going to be but not necessarily they're seeking out books, but right. hey, mm -hmm. bonus, mm -hmm. take home yeah, a like book. I, I always hope we, they would put some in laundromats, and barber shops. Yep, and mm -hmm. that's absolutely yeah. where they're at. Yeah. Um, John Caesar runs that program and he is always out and about trying to, every time I see him, he's got a car full of books, to be honest with you. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great, great project. Good. Yeah. And the libraries are, are, you know, one of the things that I don't think people understand how much we rely on them. You mentioned genealogy, though, too. You have genealogy services? Well, we work, we have a nice genealogy collection, and for years we've worked with the Treasure Coast genealogists, mm -hmm. and they provide one on one help to anybody wanting to research their family history. Hmm. And so that, that's been a very popular program, and that's all volunteers, you know, very enthusiastic volunteers. Mm -hmm. Genealogists wow. are some of the most enthusiastic people. Uh, you want to know. Another popular program is uh, technology instruction. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. and uh, s starting with something as basic as your cell phone, mm -hmm. right? People think the only thing you can do with your cell phone is make calls. I mean, not anymore. So we have entire classes that are well attended on all those other functions on your phone. I am not using the library enough. Like I sit here and I'm thinking, there's five things I actually want to yeah. use the library well, for. Well, right now I have to hand my cell phone to my 13 year old, right. but imagine if I could learn myself and I didn't have to pass it off to learn something like that. Or basic email, right? Mm -hmm. People yeah. who have their kids and grandkids who are experts. Yeah. And you, you, how frustrating you don't know how to open those photographs mm -hmm. or those attachments. Or husbands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, there is, sometimes there's no better. And that's one of our programs. It's called Book Attack. You can call and get one on one instruction. Our mm -hmm. staff will meet you right where you are, and they're specifically tailored to what Got you need. Got your IT department. I know. I yeah. love this. I love this. I've got to put it on my calendar because there's, there's at least three things I want to do, but this memory studio is. Mm -hmm. That's really piquing my interest because I was just cleaning out a closet the other day and I thought, what are we going to do with these VHS tabs? I don't have a VHS right. player no. anymore. No. You know, That's right. Yeah. So um, now I know what I can do with them. You know them. where to come yeah. starting in May. Starting in May. Yeah. And I've got boxes of pictures from oh, my I family did growing up, from my mom and dad yeah. to my grandparents, and they're all in pictures. But if you could digitalize them, wow. Um, we think it's going to be uh, very well received. Amen. I have three bins each of the three kids. Like they each get a bin, and I'm like, "Here's your hey, bin. Here's a picture." <laughs> what am I going to do with them? They I can't know. all go on my walls, no. and uh, and they're going to want them someday. And mm -hmm. I keep hoping for that day, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm not sure they're ever coming for their bins. <laughs> so their bins might be digital by it's the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have one service I want to push that's not technology. Okay. And it's un I feel like we could probably do twice as many clients. It's called our Books by Mail program. And we offer a service to people who are homebound mm -hmm. uh, in assisted living or for one reason or another can't get into the library. And we have a, a couple of people, and we can do it both in English and in Spanish, oh. who you ha make your contact and through the mail, we will keep you supplied with books and DVDs, and um, and I love that service because I'm I'm a big reader and mm. and I'm also getting older and yeah. I think gosh what would I ever do if I couldn't get out and get to a yeah. public library so this and through oh the mail we we mail you what you need and you drop it in the mail back to us when you're done and we send you something else that you need. Do um, do you work with like the Council on Aging or Meals on Wheels? We have worked with them. Yeah, but to we, make sure. We, we do our own. Like right now, we're in the middle of doing outreach to assisted living places. Mm. So we're in contact with all the activities directors, and you know, hoping they can identify clients who would be who would want the service who just don't know about it. Oh, that would be a great idea. And then you could probably get volunteers to have the assisted living collected as a whole and then you know deliver it back and mm -hmm. instead of each individual mailing back theirs mm -hmm. which i'm sure we could find volunteers to go because it's up. centrally located you're going to an assisted living facility or yeah. somebody's in a rehab yep. facility and they can't get out to the library 
Well, there, you have how many people living in assisted living facilities? Yeah. So you yeah. could have one person. You're right. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we could find volunteers to pick them up and bring yes. them back to the library mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. So if you need help with that, let us know. I will. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, if they want to volunteer for the library, how do they do that? It's uh, branch based. So whatever is your favorite branch, just call it. The branch, ha every library has a senior librarian, and we like to give people job, actual jobs. I'm a big, I used to, years ago, I worked as a volunteer coordinator. You need, actually, we need our, all our volunteers who, we, who come to us have real work that we need for you to do, and that varies from branch to branch. So call one of your branches and get into a conversation with the senior librarian, and she'll tell you what they need. Very good. Awesome. Interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed this day. We have this is one um, area of the mm -hmm. government that we haven't had on the show before, and I've been doing the show for no, I'm not. I don't want to say, but a very long time. For a minute or so. <laughs> I have seen many commissioners <laughs> twice, <laughs> and you guys rotate every year. Yeah, so. every five years. Yes, yes. So twice. Seen, okay. Yes. Do so, the math. Do, yeah, it's been a while, <laughs> and we've never had. To, um, we we tend to do every year some of the same mm -hmm. things. Mosquito control was one of my favorites. Okay, you know, I'm, tip, I'm the chairman of toss. mosquito control. Yeah. There's a tip pattern. and toss. <laughs> this is where I get half of my knowledge base, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Tip and toss is stuck in my head for the rest of my life <laughs> when it comes to mosquito control. And and um, trim notices, we always do trim notices. Mm -hmm. And we used to do budget, but uh, it got a little, it was a little snorry. <laughs> the budget was a rough one. <laughs> But this one was very, very interesting. I appreciate you coming on the show, and I, I enjoyed meeting you today, Susan. Thank you so well, hold much. Hold on a second. We have to, before we, we close out. Well, we, you and I will talk, too, but go ahead. How many years? 30 years? 20. Ten, 20 years, right? 10 is the head. Yeah. One of the reasons, too, that I wanted to get Susan on here is because she may be retiring soon. Aww. So I certainly want to thank you, and it's not today, it's not yeah. tomorrow, maybe a year down the road or so, but this lady, from the day that I met her, you see commitment, and all our staff are great, don't get me wrong, everybody, every department, we're, we're a well-oiled machine, but she goes above and beyond. Aww. Thank and you she, so much. And we have a good working relationship, and, and uh, Susie, who I work with, uh, her, and, her and Susie for years, they just, uh, they've had a great working relationship, and that it only makes it easier for me to see what the libraries need and to you know have a keen eye on what's going on. So yeah, thank you. I like this. This is very informative. We need to get it on the show more often. And it's a wonderful community, and people here love their they love their libraries. Like we have 162,000 library card holders in this county. Mm. That's a you know. And that's by half the county. Monday, I will be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've been threatening for a very long time. You're gonna do it. I'm we'll going to do it. We'll make it easy. You're feet in the water. I'm doing we'll it. I'm make doing it. easy it. for you. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank All you for right. the time. We um, are going to take some questions, and I'll check in with you, Commissioner okay. Chair Chair. Uh, yeah, how am I supposed to say it? Chair uh, Mitchell, I think I'm supposed to say, but. I always forget that because you guys rotate, mm -hmm. so I always call you Commissioner. But what's going on in the county? What do we got going um, on? Okay, what's going on in the county? Well, this is Earth. Uh, I know this is filmed next month, but uh, the 23rd of this Years. month, we're going to be having the uh, Earth Day celebration yeah. at Oxbow. It's the 20th year. We just presented Senator Ken Pruitt a huge walking stick because he was the one that brought the dollars home to start the Oxbow. And, you know, with all the growth, and it, we're exponentially growing. We're mm -hmm. the seventh fastest growing county, I believe, in, in, the, in the country. But preserving land and beachfront and on the North Fork River we just had a, a few months back a uh, Petravis Preserve yes. where it was a family that wanted to keep it for, for her ki his kids and her grandchildren to be able to walk the trails to be able to fish to be able to kayak and they were going to build 80 homes there but through the smart thinking uh, from past commissioners and, and the current commission, county commission uh, they had a ribbon cutting ceremony there, and the, the Boy Scouts chipped in and built a canopy. And uh, what's that game called? Uh, when you throw it, God, it's, it's cornhole. Uh, cornhole. The the Boy Scout troop put that together, and it's beautiful. It's just it's the old North Fork River, yeah. and it's never going to change. And, and just things like like that with Earth Month, and uh, we'll be coming into budget in July, and uh, think the county's in good shape. 
It Good. really is. Our tourism is the highest it's ever been. Yes. And that's it before the Mets came. We got eight home games this year with the Mets. And I actually went, was able to go to the last game, and it was a full house. It was just yeah. amazing to hear the, the crack of the ball and everybody screaming and laughing and, and just having a good time. So uh, we're in good shape, and I'm real proud, proud that, uh, you know, times are not always good. But when there are good, you make smart, uh, well-thought-out decisions, and uh, we're a well-oiled machine. I'm real proud of the job that uh, all the commission is doing and all the staff. We have. 800 and something people that work for this county uh, from communications and things like that nature to our parks and rec and things of that. Yeah. A lot of good things going on and I'm just uh, proud to be a part of it. You mentioned tourism and the Mets. Mm -hmm. um, we happen to have Mets baseball tickets for everybody in our audience today. Mm. They will all get a couple of tickets to the game that happens next week. We did have a shortened season. Mm -hmm. uh, we typically have 15 spring training games. Correct. We went down to eight. But here's the good thing. All of those people that usually come for spring training yeah. were down here with bated Already. breath, yeah, waiting for the games to start. So it kind of worked out well for us, to be mm -hmm. honest, because they had nothing other to do than yeah. go out and spend money in our restaurants yeah. and our other tourism yeah. attractions. So we actually have set record numbers yeah. in tourism yeah. 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 this year, oddly enough, even with yeah. the abbreviated yeah. games. Yeah. But everybody can go to St. Lucie Mets games. That happens all through the summer. We're yeah. excited about that. And what's good for families that uh, you know, with the cost of inflation and everything else, they have uh, dollar nights. Yes. So you can get hot dogs and sodas and beer for, you know, the adults, a dollar. Yes. Dollar night. And uh, it's funny because we we put in, between the state and us, 50, over $50 million to renovate Clover Park. And we use local workers, which I was proud of, you know, mm -hmm. some of the guys that my previous job got the job done ahead of schedule and under budget. And then COVID hit. Yes. Nobody got to enjoy it. Yes. And then last year, I think the capacity was you were only allowed 1,200. It was very small. Well, we this still... year, capacity is over 6,000. And yes. it's just so good to see everybody out and enthusiasm. About. Yeah, yeah. A lot of good pictures out there, too. They got a big uh, chair with the Mets uh, mm -hmm. emblem on it where you can get your whole family together and get the picture taken. It's just it's real, real pretty. Beautiful stadium. You know, we're going to do a couple of ex um, exciting things. They're going to have, we to have covering the bases, which is another show I do mm -hmm. with I've the Mets, it. obviously. Yep. Um, but we are doing a couple of great events this summer. They have two day games during the week. Mm -hmm. Just two the whole summer are during the week, um, during the day. Okay. We are going to work with the Children's Services Council through our summer passport program. Mm -hmm. Any any child in one of the 50 programs that they fund can come to the game for free. Wow. This year, we're even going to hire some buses to help pick some of them up uh, okay. because they a lot of them transportation is an issue. Yeah, sure. We have a little bit of leftover money from our back to school with the Mets mm -hmm. in August, so we're actually going to extend that to any child gets mm -hmm. in free that day, so that uh, maybe we'll have a stadium full of seven thousand kids. Yeah. who maybe half of them hadn't seen a baseball game yeah. in real life like yeah. that, at yeah. that level before. Oh, I understand, sure. So um, we're going to be doing that at the two-day games this year. Nice. Yeah, yeah, a lot of great stuff. And back to school we do every year. And this year we're expanding that. It was any um, school employee. That meant any, you know, teacher, custodian, teacher, custodian private worker. school, public school. If you were a school employee mm -hmm. in St. Lucie County, you got two free tickets to the ball game. Oh, wow. This year we're going to include frontline workers. Oh, wow. So we're expanding on that as well. And that's, that's because tough. of our great relationship with the Mets. Mm -hmm. You know, they're able to give us discounted tickets and we mm -hmm. get that sponsored by great people like A&G Pools, right. Sandy and R. Allen, who sponsor this show. Yes. yes, they have helped us a great deal mm -hmm. and um, are, are very much sponsors and involved in the Mets as well. So we're going to be able to hand out tickets today. Wow. A lot of kids are going to go see a baseball game that have never seen it before. Mm -hmm. And a lot of kids are going to, a lot of frontline workers are going to get a free day at the, mm -hmm. at the, and you know what's good about the frontline workers and, and, the, and the school employees is we set up booths of mm -hmm. our chamber members. Our chamber members get free booth space okay. and they get a bag full of tchotchkes like they've never seen before <laughs> in their home. lives to take home. Nice. So, um, and a chance to win prizes and all that kind of good stuff. So it's not just the baseball game. You're mm -hmm. really going to have an experience. I'm just envisioning the, the look on the kid's eyes. You when know, they get there the and game. they walk up that yeah. grand entrance that they built, mm -hmm. because now it is a very grand entrance oh, where is. you walk up. And in up. the evening, it's illuminated, the yes. handrail as you go up. It's beautiful. It really, really is. I'm it so is pleased. It is so beautiful. Yes. So we mm. love having them there. Well, very good. Do we have any questions before we head out? Or Okay, one second. We've got to get the mic to you. Don't forget. 
A quick question about the memory uh, with the library. Now, I don't know if everything's in place, but do we need to bring our own laptops to upload the files, a, a thumb drive? Is that all in place yet? Uh, you don't have to bring, you should bring your laptop, but we have two really good state-of-the-art computers there, and you can put stuff on a flash drive or load it into your own PC. Okay, right. thank you. And we, I'm really we'll excited about that. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I feel like I, I've got to get there early. <laughs> It'll be like by appointment. Like it's a rock concert and I'm going to go wait <laughs> by in line. By appointment only. By oh, appointment. it's a by appointment nice. only. That's yeah. smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it's smart. A, yeah. Okay, very good. Um, well, we had a, a bit of a small audience today. I don't know why. Last month it was packed. Uh, yeah, standing room only. I know it, but uh, we're very happy for those of you that came today. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed our um, Steamworks coffee. What kind of coffee is it? Mexican coffee. It's a good blend. It's it tastes different than just yeah. you know. Yeah. It's this isn't Folgers, mm -hmm. right? So it's Folgers delicious. Folgers in your cup. Yes. <laughs> And no offense to Folgers, but they're not a sponsor, and Steamworks is. So there you go. Steamworks is. Steamworks so, is Steamworks. Yes. Steamworks um, is right there on US 1 in Port St. Lucie, and, and great coffee. Please go see them. And A&G Pools, don't forget, anybody that's interested in some tickets for next week's game at the St. Lucie Mets, I have some here for you. I think I only have three. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you some tickets though but um anyway thanks to angie pools and the staff here and susan thanks for being our guest today and as You're always welcome. um commissioner mitchell nice it's to see you, to be with you great everyone. to spend time with you thank you all right till next time everybody have a great day thank you, susan.